Okay, welcome everybody. We're back part two. We're talking about building a cash buyers list through Facebook. And we're going to go ahead and get into the last and final steps here. So we've kind of already talked about, um, you know, what did, where did we leave off here? Brainstorming, the copyright, the images, the audience um, in step one. So we've got to come up with the actual ad. And then we talked about um, choosing your keywords. We talked about that as well. And then we talked about building and launching your funnel so that you have your landing page built out and ready to go. And then we talked about actually testing that landing page and making sure that it's working properly and all systems are clear. So once all systems are clear and everything's up and running, then we actually want to move to launching the Facebook ads. So let's go ahead and dive into that. So one thing to keep in mind, remember we talked about um, when it comes to Facebook advertising, the, the magic formula, at least for this, is to have one ad that consists of four images over eight audiences. You guys remember that from the previous training. Okay, so the way that you can build this out is you could simply go to Facebook's ad manager and you can create new ads, right? You could just go to the ad manager and you can go create and do it manually. Um, but I have found that to be kind of a, a lengthy process. Um, you can, you know, mess things up along the way. And um, if you don't know what you're doing, you don't have a lot of experience, it's very, very complicated because you're going to have to create eight different ad sets with basically four ads in each set, right? They give you your 32 total ads. And so it's a lot of work. And so one of the things that I found that helps that is a um, company called Ad Expresso. And with Ad Expresso, they actually have a free trial. You guys can see it here in the top right, uh, top left corner, Ad Expresso, A D E S P R E S S O. And this is a great tool because it allows you to connect your Facebook advertising account with it, go through, create the ads, and I'll show you guys how to do it here in a little bit, and just hit submit, and it will build out all of those ads for you. And once you familiarize yourself with it, um, you can do it in a matter of minutes, whereas it might take you a few hours to build out all 32 ads. So this is a super cool tool. We're going to go through it, um, and it works really, really well. Okay? So let's go ahead and go back here. Um, what else did we talk about here? So you can do it through Facebook Ad Manager. I recommend, especially if you're new at this, that you just use Ad Expresso. Make things super, super simple on yourself. Um, you want to determine your budget. Um, what I was taught and what I stuck with and works very, very well is remember we're moving through two phases. The first phase, we're launching eight different ad sets with four images each. So I give you 32 individual ads or variations. What I was taught though is that for those eight ad sets, you want to have a daily spending limit of no less than $10 a day. So really you're spending $80 a day minimum. Um, I don't recommend that you go below that. And remember, set your budget. The minimum days that we need is four days for Facebook to figure out and optimize for us, right? So um, if we do 80 times four, it's $320 minimum budget. Remember I told you guys at the beginning of this video, you're going to need a few hundred bucks to go ahead and do this successfully, right? So I recommend that. And then what happens after day four is you can keep your ads running all the way through day 10. I like to move in 10 day cycles. Um, and of course, you're going to be getting signups during this time. You're going to get people, you know, registering for your cash buyers list. But where it really starts to pick up speed and momentum is once Facebook learns how to optimize them, sometimes it takes a day, sometimes it takes up to four days. Um, but then it really starts going and it really starts picking up steam and goes really, really fast. And so for the first four days, remember I told you guys, do not stop. This is an absolutely critical line item. Do not stop. Do not pause the ads. You sit back, you relax, and you let Facebook do its thing. Okay? So remember that. So what we're trying to figure out and what Facebook is trying to figure out is what combination of keyword, ad image, and Ang uh, the angle, which is always going to be the same, that's going to be consistent, that's your ad that you wrote, right? Do people like the best? And so if you're, one of your keywords is Robert Kiyosaki and you have four images attached to that, you eating an ice cream bar, you riding a bike, you taking a walk, and you walking your dog, 
then for the audience, Robert Kiyosaki, which of those four images do they like the best? Well, they might like you eating an ice cream bar, right? That really resonates with them. So Facebook is going to determine that and then put all of its resources and energy into just showing that more often. It will do it automatically. Now, let's say you have a keyword being um, cash flow and you have the same images. You eating an ice cream bar, you walking a dog, you taking a hike, right? Now, with the cash flow audience, those people might respond better to you walking your dog photo. And so Facebook is going to optimize and zero down and show that ad more often. That's what's happening here. And then at the end of this four day cycle, or if you take it all the way through 10 days, you're going to be able to go back in like we showed you in the other videos and see which ads got the most cash buyer signups and for the lowest price. You guys will go back into your Facebook ads manager, ads manager if you remember me showing that you earlier in the first part of this and you will simply then take those and duplicate those ads. You don't need to duplicate the, the, the other six or seven that weren't performing as well. You can scrap those. I'll show you guys how to do that, okay? So let's move into this real quick. So we're going to build this out through Ad Expresso. You can do it through Facebook advertising uh, uh, ad account. I recommend that you just do it through Ad Expresso. Um, and there's a couple criteria that you're going to have in mind. So when you're doing this, and I'll show you guys how to build it out, but you want to have your age picked out, so your demographics. Who is your target audience? Well, if we're talking about people buying houses cash, do you think a lot of 18-year-olds are buying houses cash? Do you think a lot of 21-year-olds are buying houses cash? Uh, my age group is 25 to 65 plus. Quite honestly, you might want to be 30 to 65 plus because anybody below the age of 30, for the most part, is not going to be your demographic. So what happens is if you start having your age group be age 18, then you're wasting money on showing ads to 18 year olds who are not actually going to be cash buyers, right? And so who is financially stable enough to buy a house? Well, it's probably going to be people between the age of 30 minimum to 65 plus. And so you'll want to determine that for your age group. Honestly, I'd recommend 30 to 65 plus. You're going to want to target both males and females. Um, you're going to want to choose your states. You could do a nationwide advertising campaign. You could just do your particular state. I don't recommend you do just a little area. For example, um, <clears throat> in Michigan, I wouldn't do just Metro Detroit. I would do the entire state of Michigan. If you're in Illinois, I would do the entire state of Illinois. If you're in California, I'd do the entire state of California. And honestly, you might want to do a few surrounding states. Because I have a lot of cash buyers that like to buy properties in Michigan because the cap rates are so attractive. The cost of uh, buying the house is one of the most cheapest in the nation. It's very, very affordable. You can pick up houses for fifty, sixty, seventy thousand, hundred and fifty thousand dollar rentals. So I have a lot of people from all over the country that actually love to buy rentals in Michigan. And so you might not want to, you know, you might want to choose a few other states to add to your advertising other than just your own state, right, as you build your cash buyers list. Um, and then you'll set your uh, keywords, which we already talked about as well. Now, a couple things that we didn't mention yet, and these are two absolutely critical items. When you're advertising or you're creating your ads, you have to attach a conversion event to it. And you'll see when we get into Ad Expresso, if we build this out manually on Facebook ads, it'll ask you, is there a conversion event? Meaning, Facebook wants to know, when did it have success? So, success in this scenario is when somebody fills this out and goes to your landing page. They hit join now. Let's see if it's going to work. I have to refresh it, maybe. Um... Let me hit refresh. So Facebook wants to know what constitutes success. We did it, right? So let's fill this out. Dylan, um, email Dylan at your life. Let's, hold on, my brain died on me. Your life studios.com, Michigan. Boom. Okay. 
And then so when they hit join, they're going to be taking this value is required. What does that mean? Oh. Uh, when they hit join, they're going to be taken to this landing page. Well, that's a success. And this landing page, you guys can't see it with the screen capture, but it's going to have a U URL at the top of the landing page. And that is what Facebook wants to know. Okay, we reached this landing page. We had a success. And that's critical step in this process. Because Facebook will say, okay, I need to advertise and show these ads to more people that are ultimately going to land, land on this landing page. Not just the home page. Because remember, it doesn't matter if they land on the home page. We want to, Facebook to optimize the ads and show the ads to people who get through to the landing page. If you just have no conversion event, then Facebook doesn't know what to do. It doesn't know what to constitute the success, and so it shows it to everybody, and you're going to have absolutely horrible results. You're basically going to blow through your budget and not get any results. right? It's going to optimize it just sending people to your landing page. And so obviously that doesn't do us any good because we want people to convert. And so in order to get a custom conversion, we have to do a few things. So you want to make sure two key items here that you have a custom um, conversion event attached. And how do we do that? We go back into Ads Manager. And you guys can go up here to the top left corner and you guys can see custom conversions. You click on that, which I already have up. And you'll just create a custom conversion. So what might that be? Well, we want to, we want to create a custom conversion event that when people land on our thank you page, let's go back forward here real quick, that that constitutes success. And so what I'm going to do is grab that URL from the header, which you guys can't see that right now, because the screen is below there. Uh, screen capture is below that. And we're going to go here and we're going to do um, all URL traffic. And then a custom conversion convent. So if the, if the URL contains this, this is where you're copy and paste your header. Now, actually, I remove um, the HTTP. So let me go back, because this is just what I was taught. So remove, copy everything except for the HTTPS semicolon backslash backslash. So everything after that. That's how I was taught it. I don't know. I don't want to screw with it. And you just paste that. So see how it's everything after HTTPS. So what it's going to do is it's basically going to look for that URL. And every time somebody goes to that URL, it's going to say, ah, success, right? And then you can name your conversion. So it could be cash buyers conversion. Now, I'm not going to set this up because I already have one set up. And then you can the category doesn't really matter. So you could just say, um, you know, a lead, classified as a lead, and you don't have to attach a value to it, but you might just say the value of that cash buyer is 10 bucks, right? You don't have to do that. Um, and then you just hit create, and that's how you create a custom conversion event. And I'll show you guys when we get to Ad Expresso how we attach that to the ads and why it's important. So now Facebook is going to know Every time somebody lands on that landing page, it's going to trigger this custom conversion. It's going to fire, and it's going to say success. And so Facebook is going to then optimize the ads more and more to get more of those successes. Without this, you are wasting your money. If you don't have a custom conversion event attached, forget it. Don't even start. Okay. Now, in order for Facebook to even pick up this custom conversion event, there's a second part to this puzzle you have to have Facebook tracking code built into your landing page. So on your landing pages, so on this page, on each page, so you have two pages, you'll have your um, home page where people go to, and then you'll have your thank you page. Each one of those pages has to have the Facebook tracking code, the Facebook pixel, and if you don't know where to get that, you can research, how do I get my Facebook tracking code? Same thing in here, you go to um, your Facebook Ads Manager, you can just click on your pixels and grab the code. Okay. You have to have the code implemented on your landing page, because otherwise Facebook won't even know and be able to track that that code is firing. 
And so if you're using Kajabi or you're using ClickFunnels or you're using leadpages.net, a lot of those companies make it super simple to, and they'll automatically include the code for you on all of your pages. The way we do it in the Kajabi is we just go to our settings and then we find see settings tab, we find third party integrations and we implement the Facebook tracking code. Okay, and we just literally we go here to the ads manager and we uh, find the pixel and we put that pixel code into Kajabi and that's it and then you hit go and it will automatically include all of those pixels or I'm sorry it will automatically include and fire for you so you don't have to do anything other than copy and paste the code and a lot of these lead pages are landing pages websites, so it's really not complicated. Okay, you literally just copy your pixel code, go to your third party integrations, paste it in there, and boom, you're firing. Now it will be able to tell when those conversions are happening. So you have to do these two items. Okay? Okay, so let's go ahead and move into where did we leave off here? Uh, what's the next step? Oh, sit back and monitor. So let's talk about how we launched this in Ad Espresso, okay? So now let's go to Ad Espresso and I'll show you guys how to create this actual ad. So um, the first thing you want to do, and I learned this the hard way, is you want to go in and go to this category here, Tools, Asset Manager. And you want to put in your um, audiences. And I'll show you when we get to creating the ad why this step is critical. Because you'll have to go, you'll get through creating your ad and then you'll have to go through and add these. And so just add these first. And so you want to go to add a new asset and you want to go to a saved audience. So remember we had you pick eight audiences. You want to add all of those audiences here to your um, um, folder. And this will make sense to you when we go through and do the ad. And so you might say <clears throat> to yourself, these are your eight keywords that you chose. So cash flow. And I'm just going to put test here so I know it's test so it doesn't screw up my account. And you want to add all eight audiences first before you create your ad. And it will store them. So it will make your, excuse me, it will make your future ads um, a lot faster to go through because then these are already stored and you can just go through and select them. Trust me, when I go through and create the ad, this will, <clears throat> this will make sense to you, okay? So add your audiences first. So again, we went to Tools, Asset Manager, okay? We want to create a new asset, which is um, going to be your audience, and you could add eight, all eight audiences. Oh, man, uh, okay, taking forever to load. So we want to add a saved audience. And you're going to do this eight times. So that's going to be just your keywords. So it could be cash flow, and I'm just going to put test so that I know this is a test one. Your location. So what locations did you choose? What states did you choose? What um, you know demographics did you choose? Whatever. If you're doing nationwide, you might just put United States. Right? Boom. Now you can add as many as you want. So if you don't like that, you could just say, okay, Michigan. Remember I told you do all of one state, or you could do multiple states. So let's say we could do Michigan, California, you know, we could do whatever. You can add them all here, okay? So for the sake of discussion purposes, let's just say all of the United States. Okay, oops, I hit the wrong one there. And you're going to do this for all eight keywords. Demographics, this is where you put your age. So you're going to say 30 to 65. All male and female. So you can see our audience here. Um, all male and female, 30 to 65. You don't need to do advanced options. We don't need any of that. 
Um, detail targeting, this is where you actually put in your keywords. So in this case, it would be cash flow. Okay? And you can see our audience now nationwide between the, look at the top right up here. Our audience nationwide is 1.4 million people who are between the ages of 30 and 65 plus that have an interest in cash flow. Okay? Um, targeted users match any or any of the above should be selected. Expand interest, no, don't do that. Custom audience, no, you don't need that. Um, target users you're connected to, nope, you don't need any of that. So that's, that's it. Don't select any of these other things. So you're just doing your title, your location, and if that's multiple states, put multiple states there. No advanced options. Demographics, all. Age, 30 to 65. Advanced, none. Your keyword, one keyword. Don't add all of your keywords here. Don't do that. One keyword at a time. So you'll then do this seven more times. Target users that match any of the above, no expanded interest, no custom audience, no connections, engagements, then you hit proceed, which is basically save. I'm not going to save it now. Okay? And you'll do that, and then you'll have all of your audiences like I have here saved. Okay? So you'll have individual ones. Now we'll go back to campaigns. Once you have all eight of those done, we'll go back to campaigns and we'll create a new campaign, okay? So actually we just hit new campaign tab here on the top. Okay? And then we will name your campaign, so you might name it, you know, cash buyers list, cash buyer list, and I'm going to name it um, test so that I uh, know. You're going to attach it to your ad account. So for me, that's my ad account name because when you get into Ad Express, so you're going to link it with your ad account. So we'll already have this here. It's one of the first steps you do when you sign up for Ad Express. So if you want to add a tag just to search, if you have a lot of things going on, you can. You don't need to do that. And then you're just going to go to Popular Campaign Types and you're going to hit Website Clicks and Conversions. Okay? You don't need to do any of this other stuff down here. Forget that. Just do website clicks and conversions. Now we're going to create the ad. So ad format is going to be normal. I'm going to select the page, my page associated with my ad account. Um, you're going to put your headline here. So remember, if we go back to our actual ad that we wrote, that's your headline. Right? Copy that. We'll go to Ad Expresso. And then you'll put in your ad text. So we'll copy that. And make sure this is a critical item that you have your website or your landing page link in this ad description because that's where Facebook is going to take them. Okay, so let's copy that or we'll copy this. Oh, I'm sorry, that's, is that it? Yeah, that's it. Um, let's copy this whole text here. Copy this whole text. Once you guys do this work, you don't have to do it again. Super, super um, simple. You just hit on or off after this point. Okay, ignore this. It's going to say you've exceeded your characters, okay, for Instagram and all that other stuff. But we're not advertising on Instagram and all that. So actually, we're going to go down here. And the only two places we want are desktop feed in mobile news feed. We don't want any of these other ones. So we're going to take all of these off. Okay? You only want mobile feed and desktop feed. So now you can see that that went away because there's no character limits there. So that's my ad. And then you want to choose your images. So remember we said four images. So you can upload your images. I already have a few uploaded, so let's select some random ones here. One, two, three, four. Okay, so four images selected. You guys can upload your own. They're uploading. 
Now, this is your, your URL link. So this is the link to your actual landing page. So we're going to go ahead and copy that link. So go to your landing page. Go to the header. Copy it. Go back to Ad Espresso, wherever that went, and paste. Paste the same link here in the display link. Same. Those are both going to be the same. You don't need a link description. Okay. You don't need a link description. Um, call to action? No. I never. I was taught not to do a call to action, and that's the way that I'm going to keep it. So I don't do a call to action. So that's what your ad's going to look like, right? When you're on Facebook there, and you can see the different variations with the different images. Get your free off-market property. Blah 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 blah. Okay, you want to see what it looks like on the mobile feed? We click on the mobile feed. There you have it. Right? And you can see the different images that we're using. And so Facebook is going to figure out for what audience likes which image the best. And it will optimize it for that, okay? So let's just do an all systems clear here. We've got normal attached to your ad account, headline, ad text with the link in the ad text. I have it twice in here. You don't need to have it twice. Once is fine. Um, pictures, you got your four pictures here. Standard link, you copied your URL of your landing page. Make sure it's not your thank you page. No link description, no call to action. You've got uh, desktop feed and mobile feed selected. None of these are selected. Now here's the critical step. Track goal conversions with Facebook. Now you can refresh and hit sync because remember this is linked with your um, Facebook account. This is where you created that custom conversion event in Facebook. So then we go here and it will pull in your custom conversion event. And I do cash buyers conversion custom. I select that. Okay, critical. That's where you tie it together. Then you hit proceed. Now we're going to add our audiences to this. So you don't want to do a single audience, which it has selected. You want to do multiple audiences. And this is why I had you guys create the audiences first, because it doesn't allow you to create the audiences while you're in here. And so then you'd have to hit save as a draft, go back, create your audiences, go back, fire this thing back up, and get to this point again. So don't do that. So now you'll select all eight, and you'll just add them here. I have a bunch of different audiences saved. You guys will only have eight. So just keep adding them. How many were on? Three. Okay. Um, please select a save audience. Bigger pocket. Sure. Uh, create a real estate. I'm just choosing random ones here for demonstration purposes. We need four more. Flipping. Sure. Um, Robert Kiyosaki, sure. Um, connected to investors, sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We need one more. Uh, sure. Boom. Okay. Now you can see here on the right, we select our audiences. We've got them here connected, our audiences. We've got eight audiences with one headline, one text, four images. Proceed. Okay. Let me see here. Where did we end up? So you guys can see here on the far right, we're creating 32 ads like I told you. So 50 different variations, 32 different ads. If you went into Facebook, this once you hit submit, it's going to create all those ads for you. If you went into Facebook and did this manually, which you can, it's a nightmare. Nobody wants to create 32 ads, which is why this um, tool is super, super helpful. So for our budget, 
this could be your budget here, um, per day, your budget is going to be $80 because we have um, $10 a day over 8 ads. So $80 a day. You do your start date. So I recommend you just do 10 days. So if today is the 1st, it will be the 1st until the 10th. And I remind you, don't do anything shorter than that. If you know your budget's only 4 days, don't come in here and just do the 4 days. Stretch it out to the 10, and I'll show you guys where you can control this cost once it gets submitted. Because that will also screw it up. So just do the 10 days, whether you're going to do 10 or 4. And I'll show you guys why that's important and how to control it once we get this submitted. You're going to have automatic optimization. Optimize for budget distribution. Proportionally based on ad set audience size, um, evenly across all ads. So that's going to take this $80 a day and distribute it across all ads at $10 a day. So this is your spend cap. So if we know we only want to spend, remember the minimum is 80 times 4 is $320. We can enter that here. So once you reach your $320 threshold, Facebook will stop the ads, okay? So if you know you only want to do six days, eight times six is 480. You could do 480, put it in here. And Facebook will stop the ads once you reach that budget. Optimize for off-site conversions, that's important. Bidding, lowest cost. And then let's see here. You don't need split test. Any advanced options? Nope. We don't need any of that stuff. So let's get that back up there. And go ahead and hit proceed. Please wait. We're calculating minimum budget. You're almost done. Just review all of your stuff here on the right. We've got 50 variations, 4 images, 8 audiences. We're creating 32 ads. Everything looks golden. $80 per day, starting on the 1st, ending on the 10th. We're going to go ahead and publish to Facebook. Now, I don't know how long this will take to publish to Facebook. Facebook. Last time I checked, it's pretty quick. So let's head over to our Ads Manager and just see um, where it's at in the process. Ads Manager. Ads Manager. Okay. It happens pretty quick. I always go back into Ads Manager and just now triple check and make sure everything's fine. So see how easy that was just to do all that and it's going to go and create 32 ads for you versus you actually creating 32 ads? It'd be a pain in the butt. Right? Publishing campaign. So usually really, really fast. So once we get over there, the internet's going quite slow today. But once we get over there, okay, so there it is. So you guys can see here, cash buyers test is already over there. Um, it takes time for Facebook to review the ads and then make them active. If there's something wrong with your text or something Facebook doesn't like, it's going to say, I don't like your ads, fix these things. Because you could, there's rules to advertising on Facebook. And so you want to make sure that your header and your text doesn't have anything dicey in it, like get rich quick type of stuff, that Facebook's going to flag it and deny your ads. So now we can actually click on this. So it's already published these over here. And now um, we're waiting for Facebook to basically approve them. So if I go here and I go to, I click on it, new cash buyers list, and I go to edit. I want to just check a few housekeeping things. So you guys can see here is where that campaign limit is. I can remove the limit. But this is how you make sure that you don't spend a million dollars if you don't want to spend a million dollars. And so we, we are just checking that that took place. And that took place. 
you guys can adjust your limit here. So again, if we're only doing four days, 80 times four is 320, we can make that 320. So remember we selected that in the Ad Espresso account. Okay. Um, I'm actually, give me one second, because I don't want Facebook to publish these, because it's just a test ad, so I'm going to turn it off. Well, whatever, we'll just finish this real quick. Um, okay, we'll hurry up and finish before Facebook publishes it. But that's all you need to do here, right? Just make sure that this ad account, um, uh, you know, the objective is conversion, so that's true. And the spending limit is there if you guys want to set a spending limit to it. I would, right? So you might just say overall, if you're going to 10 days, 80 times 10 is 800 bucks. You might make that an $800 spend limit so that you don't go over and end up with $2,000 in Facebook ads. Okay? So that's step one of making sure everything's fine. So we'll exit out of that. I don't want to publish that. And then we'll go to... Um, see how we had this selected, and then on the left it will show you, remember we have eight ad sets. What are those eight ad sets? Those are your eight keywords. And for each of those keywords, you have four images each. That's why you have 32 ads. So you have eight ad sets, which are your eight keywords. Each ad set has four images each. So with that selected, with that campaign selected, I can go over here to the left and look at my ad sets. So see how it says in review, in review, in review, in review. Once you get the green light, that all of these are good. And, and this could take, by the way, a day for Facebook to come through and give you the green light. So don't worry about it. Come through and check because some of these might get denied if you have a dicey ad that doesn't follow Facebook's advertising guidelines. So make sure you guys aren't putting, how do you not get denied? Don't put anything dicey in there, okay? the best advice I can give you. So now we want to check, here's our actual 32 ads. We don't need to do anything there. But see how it automatically published all of these? So we can check and see that each budget is correct. $10 a day. Fantastic. Um, but the second thing that we want to check here is um, we want to select all of these eight ad sets. So I went back to the ad sets. And we want to go to edit, and we want to just make sure everything's kosher here. And so we want to make sure um, the conversion event is up. So uh, conversion event, it is selected my cash buyer conversion event. The light is green, which makes means it's working. If that light is red, that means there's something wrong with your conversion event. And it's likely you don't have the Facebook tracking code installed correctly on your landing page or that Facebook pixel installed, okay? Or you have something wrong with your URL that we copied and pasted. So that's working. That's one check item here. We want to say, okay, our budget and schedule, our daily budget, we can go view and edit. And we want to make sure that it's $10 a day for each ad. Just double checking everything. Yep, $10 a day for ads 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Perfect. So we can, we can cancel out of that. Um, end date, July 10th. We can view and edit. Yep, end date is cool. And we can do it over here too, by the way. Start date, July 1st. See on the left, I just clicked here. Everything looks good there. So we're checking the start date. We're checking the end date. We're checking the age. You know, I had, um, my audiences have different ages set up. So with your age, these will all say the same. They'll say 30 to 65. So my audience had had some different ages. So whatever for this keyword, whatever that was, had 18 to 65. So don't let that throw you off. Your guys should all say 30 and 65 plus. Gender is all. We double check that. Delivery optimization. They're all saying conversions. Fantastic. Bid strategy. Lowest cost. Fantastic. Placements. 
Facebook feeds, fantastic. That's all you need to check. Budget, they're all saying 10 bucks. Start date, the first, fantastic for all of them. End date, the 10th for all of them. Age, fantastic. Gender, fantastic. Delivery optimization, they all say conversions. Bid strategy, they all say lowest cost. Okay, that's it. Everything's golden. I just like to double check everything. If you did everything that you're supposed to in Ad Express, so it should all be correct. But I like to just go in and triple check everything. Now, there's one more thing here that I want to do. So you guys can see we're just checking. Here's all your keywords. Because remember, this is taking, we have all selected here on the left. See that? We have all eight selected, so it's showing you all eight here. Um, there's one thing that I do here that you can't do on Ad Espresso. I'll show you guys that. This optimization and delivery. So how did we get to this point? Let's take a step back. Exit out of there. Remember we went to our campaigns. We selected our campaign here, cash buyers list. We didn't click here. We went over to the left and clicked on ad sets. We selected all, so that all eight are selected. We went to edit, and then we get this view. See the edit view? We don't need chart, we don't need history, we don't need summary. We scroll down, and we get to optimization and delivery. This you have to change. This should say, obviously, conversions, but it should be um, one after clicking or viewing the ad, one day click or view. So Facebook is going to optimize and basically what happens is when somebody clicks on your ad, they should be taking action that moment, not within seven days, right? And so you want to change this to be one day click or view. See that? After clicking, one day click or view. And then that's it. And then you'll hit publish because you made that change. Now you sit back and you relax for all of your ads to get approved. And if there's an error in here, that means you did something dicey in your ad if they got denied. Don't do that. Because Facebook, if you have a lot of denied ads, will eventually ban your ad account and make you not cool anymore. So you don't want to be not cool on Facebook. So make sure you review before you even start what does Facebook not like in ads. Review their advertising policy. Don't write anything dicey. That could be questionable or piss anybody off, really. That's what it comes down to. If it's going to make somebody angry, create some sort of debate, it's, you know, whatever, then you probably shouldn't publish it in your ad. Okay, so we sit back and relax. Now, I'm going to actually delete this because I don't want it publishing, but do you guys see how easy and quick that was? I could do that in a matter of minutes now. And now that my keywords are actually all set up in Ad Espresso, I don't even have to do that anymore. I could just go create a new campaign and boom, I'm done. All right? Now, what happens is, is over the four days, you're going to see this change. Where did it go? you're going to see this change to optimizing. So when you click on your ad sets, instead of saying in review, and let me turn this off before I forget, because I, I really don't want it publishing. It might screw up my ad account. So um, off. Campaign has multiple updates saved to the draft. Publishing your update status will publish updates to the following fields. Yes, sure, publish. OK, so good, it's off. I don't want it publishing. Where did it go? Cash buyers list task. Cool. So we we'll go to the ad set. You guys will see here, instead of it saying in review, let me turn, make sure all these are off just to be safe. Publish. Off. Uh, we'll worry about that in a moment. We should be okay. This will say, oh yeah, because the campaign's off, cool. So this will say, um, sorry guys, I digress there. I just don't want it to mess up the ad account. This will say optimizing. 
That's a good sign. Once they're approved and these are all green lights, this will say optimizing your ads and you know you're golden. And you'll start to see activity and conversions happening. Um, once you figure out what ad is working and, and working the best, after your four days you can stop your ads and then go in and find, like if we go back to my campaigns here, let's look at my cash, my real cash buyers one that we did for this ad. If I go in the cash buyer cold traffic, um, let me go back to the campaigns. This is step two of the process where you duplicate the winning ads. Okay, so we're going to go to, I want to show you guys, um, step two in this process is you sit back, you monitor everything, and you wait, right? You give Facebook its time to optimize, and it does a great job at it, and it will start showing and realizing, ah, these people are converting, and so let me allocate resources to that, okay? Don't stop short of four days. And then we scale the winning ads. So after four days, we're going to go in, and we're going to look for the top performing ads, and we're going to scale them. We're going to duplicate them. We're not going to create new ads. This is very important because Facebook has already optimized those ads. It's already figured out who likes those ads, and then you want to scale those ads, okay? And the way that we do that is um, we scale them at a budget of 5 to 20 times your cost per lead. So, and, and I'll show you guys how to make a budget around this. But for example, if your cost per lead was $2.50, you would scale at least five times that. So we're going to go in, we're going to duplicate the ad, we're going to times it, and now adjust it by five at the minimum. So if our cost per lead for that ad was $2.50 times five, we're going to duplicate that ad and make a new daily budget of $12.50 a day for that winning ad. Okay, so this is where you really put your cash buyers list on steroids because we're going through and Facebook has now gone through all eight angles and said, ah, we want to choose the top one, two, three, maybe four of those angles that perform the best and get rid of the ones that sucked and then just scale and duplicate those angles. And then you guys can just turn on and off if you want to build your cash buyers list more, you just turn those winning ad sets back on, get the flood coming in of people, you know, sign up for your cash buyers list, and then turn it back off when you want. It's on demand. It's like, hey, you go out to the garden hose, turn it on demand when you want some water. Turn it off when you're done. You want some more cash buyers? Turn it on. So now we've figured out which ads to turn on and off on demand. So let me show you guys real quick. So let's assume I'll use my cold traffic that I already did for this training, my, my kind of practice here. I'll use this cash buyers cold traffic. I'll go and click on it. I'll go to my ad sets, and I have 12 because I already duplicated four of the winners. And so I'll go through, and I'll figure out, okay, let's go to, let me change my report view here real quick to something different. Uh, performance. Okay, so we're going to have to ignore a couple of these here real quick because these are the ones that are already duplicated. So this one I already duplicated. Let's see, I labeled it running. That one I duplicated, that one I duplicated, that one I duplicated. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these eight that are not selected in the blue were my original ads. And so I would go through here and I would say, okay, which ones got the most conversions? And so this one here got 11 conversions. See the results? 11 conversions. And I just went through and relabeled it. You can edit because I relabeled it to what the actual keyword was. How do you know that? You can click on it, go to View Charts, go to, well, it's taking forever to load here. 
because it will just show as this without a title and then you can go through and actually add the, the title so you know what keyword it is. Because Ad Espresso, um, I don't, you could do it on Ad Espresso, I just never learned that way so I don't do it. So I just do it this way. I don't know why it's taking so long here. But you go to edit and apparently I'm still on dial-up internet. Um, you go to the edit tab and you want to figure out what keyword this is. See, I changed the, the name for the keyword. Um, but you go to the edit tab and you'll see your keyword here, Robert Kiyosaki under detail targeting, right? So for example, what keyword is this up here, number eight? We don't know. We'll figure that out in a moment. Go to edit. Yeah, you don't even have to click on view charts. Just click on the edit one. Scroll down. Ah, Dean. So then I could go up here and change the title to Dean, right? So I know what keyword that is. Here's one thing I forgot to tell you. While those ads are running, don't make any changes. Don't go in on your initial first phase of this when they're in the four to 10 day period. Don't make a single change. If you go in there and change something like the title of this, if you go in there and change a date, if you go in there and change a budget, you will screw it up. You will screw it up and you'll, be, and you'll waste your money. You'll have to redo it again for another four day period. So when you hit launch from Ad Espresso and all those lights go green and they hit testing, right, and they're optimizing, do not make a single change. I repeat that. Do not make a single change. Wait until the four days and then you can go in and pause the ad and figure out which one were your winning ads and then make your changes. Okay? So you guys can see, remember, ignore these four here because these are the ones already duplicated. So you guys can see that I chose the top performing ads. I went in and changed it so I know what keywords they were. Look, Robert Kiyosaki got 11 conversions. Flipping got 8 conversions. Uh, real estate investing got 8 conversions. Passive income got 15 conversions. This keyword only got 1 conversion. This one only got 2 conversions. This one only got 2 conversions. At $18.11 per conversion. I wouldn't want to scale that, would I? This one got one conversion, $34.70. You wouldn't want to convert that, would you? No. So I went through and I saw which ones, which were the, and you guys can pick, it just depends on your budget. Pick the top one and scale it. Okay, this is the best one here at Cash Buyers. Let's scale that bad boy to times 20 each day. So four, and, and here's the cost per conversion, $4.74 per conversion. As time goes on, those costs get better because Facebook further optimizes them. If the longer you let this ad run, if you let it run the full 10 days, the cost will get better. Okay? Um, because there's, you know, there's more statistics to pull from. So pick your top one, two, three, or four that converted the best. So who got the most and for the lowest price? You may only pick the top two. So the top two here are Passive Income and Robert Kiyosaki, right? If you wanted to pick your top four like I did, it was Real Estate Investing, Cash Buyers, Robert Kiyosaki, and Passive Income. So assume that these four weren't here, what you would do is let's say you wanted to take this Cash Buyers one and you say, hey Dylan, that's the only one I want to scale because it's got 15 conversions at $4.74. Then I would just go to duplicate. Go leave original campaign, number of copies, one, and hit duplicate ad. Now let me do one that, um, so I don't mess this up, let me do one that I don't want. So for example, Ad 8, my worst ad. You wouldn't duplicate this, but I'm just doing it so I don't screw up my ad account here. So assuming this was a winning ad, hit duplicate, 
Original campaign, leave that. You don't need to do any of this stuff. Number of copies, just one. Show existing post and gate, yes. Make sure that that's selected and hit duplicate. It's that easy. It's going to duplicate that ad. Now you can go in and change this, and I'm going to change this to winning ad one. So you might want to put your keyword like um, cash flow um, top ad, right? Copy. And I'm going to put test so I know to delete this in a moment. Now you want to take what that cost was per conversion and you want to remember what we said here in the training? At the minimum you want to times it by five. Up to 20 times. So then that's going to produce for us five leads a day from that. If you want to scale it by 20, do it by 20. So we would just do in this scenario $2.50 times 20, right? 2.50 times 20 is 50. So we would change our daily budget and we're going to get 20 conversions a day from that keyword alone. So we, but we're going to be spending $50 a day because remember it's costing you $2.50 per lead. So you guys can just figure out your budget, what you want to do and what you can afford. So now once we got that duplicated, we're going to go in and we're going to make sure that this is right. We don't need to adjust any of this. We're going to change the daily budget to what you guys determine. So in this case we said $50 per day. $50 per day. Right? It's going to give you an estimate of the reach and the conversion as well. Don't worry about any of that. Just change the budget to $50 a day and then you can start and say, okay, I want to scale my top two or three ads for the next five days as I build this list. So remember what I did is I went back in, found my top four ads, scaled them for four days and got another 75 or 80 cash buyers to sign up for 300 and something bucks. So you guys could go back in and do that and say, okay, let me run these top four over the next five days, six days, seven days, whatever your budget is. And so you would adjust that here. Boom. So we adjust the daily budget, $50 a day, for the next how many days. You don't mess with any of this stuff here because it's a duplicate of the one that was working. So you don't mess with any of that. Okay, this should all be the same because you just copied it, you duplicated it. So the only thing you change in here is the date you want to run these and the um, daily budget to 5 to 20 times what it spent. And then you would just hit publish. That's it. And you do that for as many ads as you want. So this ad was thirty-four seventy a day right but pretend it was two dollars and fifty cents a day like this ad here was three dollars and fifty one cents a day I would times that by five to twenty that would be your new daily budget so I'm gonna delete this here so that I don't forget um, edit duplicate how do I delete oh I don't want to delete that one I have selected. Make sure I just had that one selected. Um, delete. There we go. Make sure it's just that one. Delete. Yes. Okay. So we don't get uh, confused. And then so then you would delete out of here, like I just did, all the other ones that you don't want. All these crappy ones. These $3, $34 ones, whatever, $18 ones, the ones that weren't working. And so then in here, you should just have your one, two, three, four top ads that you want to run with to then, you know, this literally puts building your cash buyers list on steroids and delete all the other ones. Okay, I left them in here to illustrate this for you guys for this training. Now, keep in mind, these ads won't run and I ran into this mistake because I set a daily budget 
And so my budget got reached over here at the campaign level. See, I just went back and switched to the campaign level here on the left. So I had set, and most of you guys, I would imagine, had set a campaign budget. So if I went to, to edit, you might have a campaign spending limit here that was 800 bucks, and your ad reached 800 bucks, and it stopped. Well, when I went to duplicate my ads, I was like, why the heck aren't these ads aren't, aren't running? Because I still had that budget in there. Remember, we didn't create new ads. And so it's not going to run those ads because it's still within the existing campaign and that campaign budget was reached. And so I had to figure out the hard way. I was like, oh, now I know what's going on. I had the spending limit in there. And so what you would do is go here and just hit remove that spending limit. Or so those ads that you just duplicated won't run. You don't need to have a new spending limit here because you've already went in to your ad sets and put in your new daily budget and for the date. You're only going to have it run four or five days or whatever. Okay? So if you run into that situation, go back to your campaign and you're going to see, oh, well, you have a daily you know, spending limit there. And while I'm in here, let me delete this one that we messed around with too real quick. We don't need that anymore. Cash buyers list test, delete. Okay, so you want to just have a nice, clean advertising portal. I don't like old stuff in here. That's why I delete it. Okay, hopefully that makes sense for you guys. If you got confused and it's a lot of information, rewind the video. So we're scaling the, um, the winners only, deleting the losers. So let me give you guys an example here. One more example, we'll wrap this up. Let's say you decide, you know, to cost, you, you found a lead that you wanted to scale at $3 per lead, and you wanted to build a list of, let's say, 100 cash buyers. So this is, most of you guys will probably fall in this scenario. Let's say, hey, Dylan, I'm just trying to get a list of 100 cash buyers to work from. And you know that it costs you whatever because you did your ads. So you know, you know a lead's costing you, say, $3 per lead or $4 per lead or um, $2.50 per lead or whatever it is. And you can just do the math. So if your per lead cost is $3 per lead and you want to have 100 people on your cash buyers list, $3 times 100 is you've got to spend 300 bucks. If you know your cost per lead is $4.50, times 100 leads, you're going to have to spend 450 bucks. So let's just say you found a lead in your cash buyers, your top winning ads. I'll show you guys here, for example. Here were my winning ads. See, passive income cost me $3.34. Robert Kiyosaki cost me $2.31. Flipping cost me $2.97. Real estate investing cost me $2.22. This was the first time I went through and did my campaign. And remember, I scaled those. So if you're trying to get to, you know, if you know that it's going to cost you that, then you want your new budget to say 300 bucks. Set 300 bucks. So I might take my top four winning ads, passive income, Robert Kiyosaki, flipping, and this. If I times them by the minimum, then my new daily budget is thirteen thirty six for that keyword, eleven fifty five for that keyword, fourteen eighty five for that keyword, eleven eleven for that keyword. So if I add all those up, my new daily budget, because I chose my top four keywords, is I should be spending fifty one dollars and thirty seven cents a day. Well, hold on, Dylan. I only have three hundred bucks to spend. Okay, that's fine. Divide 50, take your top keywords, to times them by the five minimum each. They'll give you your new daily budget. You may only have three of these. You may choose to only do your top three, which I'd recommend you do your top at least two or three to give you variation. I did four. You know, if I drop this one out, then I would take $11 off my daily budget every day. So it would come out to what, like uh, 41 um, you know, $40 a day instead of 51 
But in this scenario, I took my top four, added them all up. I got $51 a day divided by, set your budget, 300 bucks. What's 300 divided by 51? So then you'll want to run. When, remember we went through and chose the new schedule to run our ads, our duplicated ads. We went back in and said, okay, let's run these. Well, if your budget's only 300 bucks and you got to spend 51.37 a day, then you're going to set your campaign to run 5.8 days. So in this case, either make it five or six days. So when you went back into your ads manager, you duplicated your ad, right? You duplicated your ad, and remember, you guys are going to delete all the crappy ones, so you only have your top ads in here, top three or four. You go into that ad, the duplicated one, you go to your edit, you guys saw me just do this before, and you choose how long you want it to run. Well, that's depending on your budget. Because we know we got to times it by five minimum. And so you would just do here, okay, I only have 300 bucks to spend. 51 divided by 300 is five to six days. So I'm just going to go here and make all my ads, those three, four ads that you're creating, run for, where did it go? Um, daily budget, you would change that, and then your schedule, right here, right? Your start date and your end date. You would change that for your five days. Have them run for five days. And then you're going to spend your 300 bucks. See how simple that was? Total minimum daily budget, five days. So now if we scaled that times five, we could expect five leads per day. If this was times by 20, it would be 20 leads per day. If this times by 10, it would be 10 leads per day per ad that you scaled. So in this example, we have 5, 10, 15, 20. If we scaled this to 20, it would be 2, 4, 6, 80 leads per day. But it's not, it's 5. So we could expect 20 new cash buyers per day over 6 days because that's the maximum we can go so we don't exceed our $300 budget, we can expect 120 new cash buyer signups to sign up in five to six days for $300 by scaling that winning ad set. And then turn it off. And then you want to build another, you know, 120, turn it back on for five more days. And then turn it off when you get some more money. And then when you get some more money, you want to build, keep building your cash buyers list, Go back in, just turn those winning ads back on again. You don't have to reduplicate them. Just turn them back on and set a new date. Run for another five days or run for another 10 days. And so that's how you can put this on steroids. Okay, so that's the framework for doing this successfully. Now you guys are probably like, holy shit, Dylan, my head is spinning. Um, yeah, this is kind of crazy. Listen, this isn't for the faint of heart. This is a way to go in. Now, if you, wanna, if you want the easy way to build a cash buyer's list over a long period of time for no money, then you can get involved in the Ultimate Real Estate Investing course. We have a whole section in there. I give you four, five, six ways, maybe even more than that, on how to build a cash buyer's list organically like I did, 1,000 people over 90 days. And there's many free options in there to do it. That's how I did it. Um, but it'll take you time. If you're in a pinch, that's what this training's for. If you're in a pinch or you have extra money available to you and you want to rapidly build a cash buyer's list, like super fast, scale it. You could get 1,000 people in a couple, in, in three days. You guys know the numbers. We just did it. You would just scale it appropriately, right? So that's what this training is for, is to build a cash buyer's list rapidly for just a few hundred bucks, very, very fast, okay? You might be in a pinch and you might have a deal under contract and you might not have a cash buyer's list. You may say, oh shit, I need one. This is one way to do it and it's very, very effective. Set this up ahead of time so that you can just turn it, once the framework's already built, you can just turn it on and off. You just turn it on and off, on and off as needed. You don't have to do this hard work again. So 
This year, you guys know I'm on a mission to help a thousand people reach financial freedom through real estate investing. Okay, both single family and multifamily. So, if you're going through this training and you have questions and you start to build this out and stuff's not working like you want it to, then if you're a student of the Ultimate Real Estate Investing Course, when you buy the Ultimate Real Estate Investing Course, you get lifetime coaching with me. So every week you get group coaching. You jump on a coaching call with me. Right now they're on Thursdays. You say, hey Dylan, I went through the cash buyers list building training and I'm having issues here. We jump on a screen share and I say, ah, there's your problem, let's solve it, right? So that's an advantage of being in the Ultimate Real Estate Investing Course because the course comes with no additional cost, no monthly cost. Not that you get coaching with me for like six months and then it goes away. You have lifetime coaching with me every single week. As you're building this and you run into trouble, get on a coaching call with me and I'll help you through the next step. Okay? If you don't and you're not involved in the Ultimate Real Estate Investing Course and coaching, I'd love to have you consider it, get involved with us. A lot of people are changing their lives through the course. It's incredible to see. So if you're interested in getting involved, it's literally everything you need to start, grow, expand a real estate investing business. If you're already doing deals, I have all of my systems and processes in there. We scale you to 100 deals a year. Comes with the coaching, comes with the um, private Facebook group of students and the mastermind. It's incredible. Most people are out there learning about real estate investing. They're taking data from all these different sources. And the number one common thing I talk with people on the phone is, hey Dylan, there's no course out there that puts it all together. Not only is there no course out there that puts it all together, there's no course out there that also provides you the support in perpetuity. It just doesn't exist. And that's the great thing about our course. One of my students, and I love this quote, I just actually heard it a few weeks ago, he says it best. He says, Dylan's help is like hiking a trail with the best to 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 topographical, I can't speak, topographical map, a video overview of the trail so you know what to expect, and a radio to call the trail expert for help when you need it. That's how he that's how he described our course. It's like hiking hiking a trail with the best topographical map a video overview of the trail so you know what to expect, and a radio to call the expert whenever you need help. With this type of guidance and support, there's no reason you can't be a successful investor, guys. That sums up the Ultimate Real Estate Investing course. We provide you everything you can ever imagine, including constant support if you get stuck. And it's not just, hey, email us. It's, hey, get on a group coaching call with me. So I'd love to have you guys be part of the course with me. The way that you do it is you can't just buy the course. You gotta get on a strategy call with me. And the reason for that is because I wanna make sure the course is a good fit for you. I don't wanna take your money and then find out you're not gonna use the course and then that doesn't do anybody any good. Doesn't do me good, doesn't do you good. So you get on a strategy call with me, we talk about where you're currently at in your real estate investing business. Maybe you haven't even started. Maybe you got a few deals under your belt. Where would you like to go? And then I give you some advice and some feedback on what we can do to get you there, right? So the way to do that is you go to our um, landing page. You get a free investor case study by visiting vsl.theuric.com. vsl.theuric.com. And you'll get a free investor case study. Put in your name and email. You can watch the case study video. Right below the video is an opportunity to schedule that strategy call with me. Take advantage of that. My focus is on you providing value to you. I'm not pitching you, I'm not selling you anything. If you decide you wanna get involved in the course, you get a 60% off on that phone call. I only offer a discount two ways, on the strategy call or at a live event with me. And so if you decide you wanna get involved, and if you're on that call, you can get 60% off, okay? The other way that you can check out the course, you can just go to the course's website. You can see a bunch of great feedback there, testimonials, student case studies, a whole bunch of other stuff. Check out what's included. There's a video on the page where I actually do a screen capture diving into the course so you can see what's in the course. You can go to theuric.com, and from there, you can actually schedule a strategy call too. I'll show you guys, theuric.com is the actual um, website for the course. 
And so you guys can see here, learn more. They'll take you to that strategy call with me. I've got some great training for you guys. Best path to get started in real estate investing. These are all webinars that I did here. Awesome webinars. Subscribe to me on my YouTube channel, um, which I have like over 80 videos and free content and training. I do free speaking. I'm traveling across the country, um, doing free meetups for everybody, teaching them how to reach financial freedom. I am like a madman this year. Here's that video um, inside the course. It's 58 minutes. I actually go through the course. People say, hey, Dylan, do you have a free trial? Here it is. There's your trial. Click on the video. See everything that's in the course. Student profits to date. A little bit more info. Again, another opportunity to schedule a strategy call. Testimonials. Like I could put all of our student testimonials on here. We put, I don't know, 15 or 20 of them. A couple student interviews. There's way more on the YouTube channel. And then this is where you can actually schedule the strategy call. You just hit apply now. Or you go to that website I gave you, vsl.theuric.com. Okay, and then lastly, follow me on Facebook. I'm putting a ton of great stuff, the bulk of my content. When is my next webinar? I put out free content every single week, um, new content. Um, the best place to follow me is on Facebook, at Dylan S. Borland. Okay, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this training. If you're not a student of the course, would love to help you reach that financial freedom through investing in real estate. Would love to help you guys hit those goals. Make sure you join. Make sure you have that call with me. If you are a student of a course, would love to see how many of you guys go through and actually do this cash buyers list. And um, I'm here to help you through the process. So make it a good week. We'll see you guys in some more training. Take care.